Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of 1 Kings. In chapter 20, we're reading a story about the, uh, the king of Israel as he is fighting against the king of Syria. Now, Ben-Hadad is the king of Syria, and he has, uh, um, he has come against Israel. And Israel is feeling uh, just a, a sense of inadequacy and, uh, and an inability. I believe the king of Israel at that time is Ahab. And uh, Ben-Hadad has come against him, and, and Ahab has defeated him. This happened earlier in uh, chapter 20 and perhaps chapter 19. And the point here was that uh, the, the king of Syria... Uh, tried to suggest that it was because of uh, Israel's God was a regional God who was over one part of uh, the hills versus the valleys, and that's why they were defeated. But if they engaged them in the other place so that their gods would be uh, more dominant, then, of course, they would have victory over Israel. And here's what, here's what the, uh, the prophet says to the king of, of Israel. He says, And a man of God came near and said to the king of Israel, Thus says the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is a God of the hills, but he is not a God of the valleys. Therefore, I will give all this great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Now we need to understand that the victory that God gave to Israel over the Syrians then was not due to any kind of righteousness on the part of Israel. It was not due to any kind of uh, uh, special military uh, prowess that the Israel, uh, Israel army would have. In fact, the previous verse tells us that they were uh, that they felt like they were a flock of goats against a great multitude and that they were they felt totally inadequate but god was the god who who is over all and in all and through all and that's because he is the only god the gods that are regional that these syrians thought were uh, were important in certain kinds of terrain, they are not gods at all. And that's the point that God wanted to make to, uh, to Ahab, the king of Israel. He wanted, to, he wanted him to understand that the God that we serve, the God that Israel has trusted in from the time of Moses, actually from the time of Abraham, through Moses and down through all of the years of the kingdom, that this particular God is the God who is over all and in all and through all. We call him a sovereign God, and indeed he is. He is the one who rules. And the good news is that he rules today also. He hasn't forsaken and he hasn't abdicated that place, but he still is the God that we worship and that is over all and, uh, and controls the events of this world. Excuse me. This is the God that we serve. And this is the thing that we're need, we need to remember. That just because he, uh, uh, he, he seems to uh, have his influence in certain places around the world doesn't mean that he is not also the God of those other places. I know that there are places in this world where it would seem that the enemy of our souls has strongholds that, uh, that it would almost seem that the God of Israel can't penetrate. We, that's, a, that's a false idea. We, it may feel that way. It may seem that way. But the God of Israel is the one who is true and is over all. And that's what, that's what uh, the nation of Syria didn't understand until after this battle. That's what the nation of Israel didn't even understand, even though they were the ones that were the recipients of God's uh, grace to them and the victory that they could have. The important thing for us to remember is that our God is a sovereign God. And all of the uh, comings and goings and the doings of all of the potentates of this world are not 
uh, in any way going to challenge the God of Israel when he's ready to act. We recognize and we worship the one who is over all and in all and through all. Jesus says, I am and there is no other. The God of Israel says, what God can give you uh, can predict the future. And of course, we know that no other God can because the God of Israel is the only true and living God. Father, we thank you that you are still on the throne. We praise you that all of the events of this world, all of the cares, all of the, uh, the issues that are going on around us, that all of these things are under your control. And we pray that you would help us to keep our eyes fixed upon you. I pray that we would be more and more and more confident that you're not a regional God, but you are a God who is over all and you will one day reign supreme. So thank you for your faithfulness. Help us to keep our eyes fixed upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.